हे गाइज माई सेल्फ नेहा गुप्ता यू मेंट ऑफ अ करंट अफेयर्स सो लेट्स बिगिन टू डेज वीडियो बट बिफोर दैट यू नीड टू नो दैट दिस पी डी एफ इज डाउनलोडेबल एंड द लिंक इज इन डिस्क्रिप्शन बिल सो गाइज द वेरी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज विच ऑफ द स्टेटमेंट इज इन करेक्ट अबाउट द ग्लोबल साइबर सिक्योरिटी आउटलुक ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू रिपोर्ट सो हियर द राइट आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए दैट इट हैज बिन रिलीज बाई इंटरनेशनल टेलीकम्युनिकेशन यूनियन विच इज नॉट द राइट आंसर इट इज वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमिक फोरम दैट हैज रिलीज दिस रिपोर्ट नाउ द फैक्ट्स फ्रॉम द रिपोर्ट दैट यू नीड टू नो फ्रॉम द एग्जाम परस्पेक्टिव आर दैट इन द फर्स्ट सिक्स मंथ ऑफ ट्वेंटी the volume of ransomware attacks has increased by 151% at the same time in the year 2021 only there were 270 attacks per organization which denotes a 31% increment from 2020 so this is a really precarious situation for the businesses for the uh, for the industries and this will also hamper the industries or businesses or startups from entering into the market so this is at the at present is serving as a bottleneck Uh, in the entire working scenario in the entire industrial ecosystem so it needs to be catered now this report also states that at present there is a dearth of trained cyber secure security personnel which which the world needs to stop these kinds of attacks on the organizations so it will take time definitely to train the cyber security personnel but at the same time this this entire ecosystem this entire sphere is offering a lot of opportunities for the people who are tech savvy who want to explore their careers in the it sector so that is how the world is evolving right now and the other points from this report are that this report has talked about shifting from cyber security to cyber resilience now what is the difference so cyber security refers to securing your software your cyber space from the third party whereas cyber resilience refers to basically the situation when you are able to protect your cyber space at the same time you are able to uh, perform efficiently okay in businesses <clears throat> there is a dire need to have the cyber resilience because just at uh, just preventing the entire ecosystem from the cyber breach would not do wonders for the businesses because they need to function at the same time otherwise they will face losses and therefore cyber resilience is the new concept that is emerging that businesses need to adopt so that was all from this report that i think are uh, are the important facts that can be asked in the examination apart from this this is basically a perception or uh, the opinion based outlook wherein the opinions of the experts were asked for example 61% of the experts feel this thing 61 51% of the respondents feel this thing so i don't think that these many statements are important from your exam point of view particularly from this report so let, that's all for this report now let's move on to the next question who has been appointed as a chief uh, demission of india's contingent for 2022 commonwealth games first of all what's the venue of this games so it is birmingham uk now uh, rakesh anand has been appointed as the chief demission now what is chief demission so the person is the uh, head of the indian contingent basically uh, rakesh anand would act as the diplomatic head of the contingent sent by india for the commonwealth games apart from this uh, the wushu association of india's president the bhupendra singh bajwa has also been appointed as india's chief demission but for a separate tournament and that uh, basically championship and that is 2022 asian games so this is going to take place in hangzhou china so here we have talked about two international games lined up for 2022 first is birmingham commonwealth games and second is the asian games 2022 to be held in hangzhou china okay china is also going to host uh, the winter olympics so china is going to host two major sports events this year so do remember these facts moving ahead next question is which of the following statements is incorrect about the inequality kills 2022 report of oxfam india so here guys you have the four, four statements the wealth of billionaires increased from 23.14 lakh crores to 53.16 lakh crores during march 2020 to november 2021 the collective wealth of india's 100 richest people hit a record high of rupees 57.3 lakh crore uh, in 2021 uh, would be the full statement 
More than 4.6 crore Indians are estimated to have fallen into extreme poverty in 2020. Just a 1% wealth tax on 98 richest billionaire families uh, in India can finance Ayushman Bharat for more than 7 years. None of the above. So guys, here the right answer is option E, none of the above. All of the statements are mentioned in the report itself. So let's, uh, deep, uh, let's know about this report in depth. Uh, so this report has been released by Oxfam India. So inequality report is one of the flagship report released by this organization. Now according to this report, <coughs> there is a huge gap in the income particularly during the pandemic time. Okay, so that's the main crux of this report. Inequality kills. So this report is highlighting that not only the pandemic was killing people, but at the same time, the inequality is going to hit really hard uh, the people of India in the coming, uh, in the days to come. Okay, so as per this report, 84% of the households suffered a decline in their income and uh, the number of billionaires in India increased from 102 to 142 and here guys we are talking about the tenure of the pandemic 2021 okay also 2020 2020 but this data is for 2021 now as per this report just a one percent wealth tax on 98 richest billionaire families in india can finance ayushman bharat for more than seven years so guys right now we do not have any wealth tax in in india our taxation system is progressive in nature, uh, yes, but the wealth tax is not there. I hope that you know what the pro progressive taxation is. Progressive taxation means higher tax for the people who have high income, lower tax for the people who have low income. So that's progressive taxation system. Wealth tax is not there in India. But what is your opinion regarding the wealth tax? Should it be in introduced in India? Because we have clearly seen what kind of inequality has been created in India. So there is a huge gap that needs to be bridged. And as per this report only, that 1% of the wealth tax um, on the richest people, on the richest families can finance Ayushman Bharat scheme for the, for the seven years. So the money that the government is spending at present on this scheme will be utilized for creating the infrastructure in the country or other welfare schemes. So what do you think? Should this wealth tax be introduced in India? But do uh, give, uh, do consider both the both sides of uh, arguments like the pros and the cons. I have told you the pros that the money that the government needs to spend on various kinds of initiatives like the Ayushman Bharat that money will be that money or that expenditure will get a support from this wealth tax but on the other hand it may discourage the richest people for uh, from paying taxes at the same time they may also shift their basis to other countries so these are just uh, the most prima facie pros and cons of the wealth tax that i have told you you need to consider more pros and cons and then give me your opinion what do you think should it be introduced or not in india Moving ahead <coughs> in this report only. <coughs> oh, sorry. The collective wealth of India's 100 richest people hit a record high of rupees 57.3 lakh crores in 2021. Okay. But if you consider the tenure of March 2020 till November 30, 2021, the wealth of the billionaires have increased from 23.14 lakh crores to 53.16 lakh crores. At the same time, 4.6 crore Indians are estimated to have fallen into the extreme poverty. And guys, this number is equivalent to half of the global new poor people that UN has est estimated. So this is a huge number. 4.6 crore people is a huge number. Okay, now here we are talking about just poverty. And if you see the multidimensional poverty index released by the Niti Aayog in itself, that also states that 25% or the one quarter of India's population is multidimensionally poor. So that is also a fact, not only lifting the people from the poverty, but at the same time providing them with other socioeconomic benefits so that they can be lifted out from the multidimensional poverty that they are facing right now. Guys, on this note, I want to ask you that 
which state has the highest multidimensionally poor people can you guys tell me the answer of this question as well so let's see how much have you prepared for your upcoming examination moving ahead operation pakiza belongs to which country so guys here the right answer is south africa okay so the entire news is that recently south africa has sent its uh, third satellite into the orbit and that satellite has been launched under the operation pakiza basically this entire project of the mda satellite constellation is being developed under the operation pakiza now what is the operation pakiza let me introduce you with the concept first and then i will tell you about this entire news so operation pakiza is the initiative of the south african government to transform the country uh, in terms of socio economic development at the same time fast pacing the socio economic development in the nation by uh, by building the infrastructure of the nation by introducing various welfare schemes and this satellite launch is just a part of operation pakiza so operation pakiza is an umbrella operation oh sorry Uh, umbrella initiative of the south african government to transform the india like we have the new india uh, the new india motto but that is the motto that we have that's the vision of the uh, of the state of india but operation pakiza is the initiative that is working at present okay so do remember this point now let's come to the news what is the news right now so the news says that south africa has launched its third satellite in the mda constellation so first let me tell you that south africa has developed the satellites the nano satellites for its mda constellation mda stands for marine domain awareness constellation south africa is building a constellation of nine satellites in the orbit and those nine satellites will basically observe the exclusive economic zone of south africa and prevent the basically not prevent but provide the information to the south african government about any fishing vessel or about any ship entering in the exclusive economic zone of south africa so that's the basic purpose of this mda satellite constellation now a total of 9 satellites will be launched under this mda satellite program and so far two satellites were launched and this time third satellite has been launched under this uh, constellation program so the previous two satellites were named as zacube 1 and zacube 2 so that is all about this mda maritime constellation now you need to know the launch of the third satellite so the launch took place from the cape canaveral rocket launch site in florida and it was on the spacex rocket so spacex basically undertook the transporter 3 mission okay so basically spacex you need to know this fact that spacex spacex offer the launch facilities to other nations who do not have launch satellite launching facilities within their nations okay so they just develop satellite they transport it to us then spacex put those satellites on its rocket and then launch it into the space okay and for that it charges amount from the countries so for this basically uh, this time spacex has launched 105 satellites and the round that the spacex has uh, done right now has been termed as transporter 3 mission so that this is nothing but the launch of 105 satellite that also includes south africa's satellite okay and that entire uh, initiative or the entire uh, entire process of launching this thing has been named as the transporter 3 mission or we can say the entire exercise is the transporter 3 mission under which spacex has launched its uh, 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 spacex has launched 10 satellite 5 satellites on its rockets okay now there is another fact related to the mda satellites and that fact is that mda satellites all the satellites that are developed under the mda constellation project are developed and designed in south africa only and this is the first time in the entire african continent that a satellite has been developed indigenously developed and designed indigenously prior to south africa many african countries have launched their own satellites as well but they have developed those satellites with the help of another country that is non african in nature okay so this time the entire satellites design and the development has been done by the south africa itself 
so that makes it the first indigenous satellite of the african continent so do remember this point which of the following is the closest neighbor of the kingdom of tonga so guys here answer is australia you must have heard about the uh, about the volcanic eruption that took place near the island of tonga so let me first show you the location so guys this is the location of tonga and here you can see australia is the closest neighbor but if you want to see the exact closest neighbors of tonga then this is the picture once you will get the pdf you can just zoom it out on your own and see what are the major island nations however this picture is showing the major island neighbors of tonga only so here is fiji as you can see okay so this is tonga now guys the volcanic eruption you must have heard about it that it is really huge and the casualties of this uh, eruption are not yet revealed only uh, it is uh, it is informed that only two people have died here because of this explosion but the exact number of casualties are not revealed yet because the connectivity from uh, connectivity from this entire island has been lost due to this eruption now here is a really uh, interesting concept that you need to understand so this fiji island provides the connectivity services to tonga via the undersea cable okay so this cable is disrupted due to the volcanic eruption and right now we uh, basically the world does not know what kind of uh, damage has been done to the undersea cable and what uh, quantum of repair work does it would it need in the future the right, right now the work on that is being done now the question here is that what is the viability of undersea cables at times like these okay so is it feasible to go with the undersea cables also you need to question yourself that why the countries prefer undersea cable at all when this is the era of satellites we are expected to launch more than 70000 new satellites by the year 2030 in this decade only then why are the countries like tonga fiji transporting the connectivity via the undersea cables at the same time many countries have announced to uh, to establish the undersea cable network to provide connectivity to the far fetched areas why are they doing this so guys here the reasons are very reasonable i must say first reason is that the undersea cables can carry a lot more data than a satellite at the same time they are very cost efficient okay so satellites are uh, involve a really high cost in comparison to undersea cables the third reason for their viability is that the undersea cables do not need the particular launch vehicle facilities they do not need extra venza to be launched therefore the cost of launching these undersea cables are really really less at the same time the entire work of laying down the undersea cable is also very time effective so that's how this is um, that's why the countries are favoring undersea cables and right now the connectivity has completely been lo lost from the island of tonga and the work is on uh, to provide the connectivity now guys australia and new zealand are also aiding the island of tonga new zealand has sent its ship and australia and, uh, and new zealand both of them are doing aerial service to assess the um, the damage that has been done to the island now i want to show you this picture so guys this is the capital of tonga and this is before explosion before eruption and this is after eruption so here you can clearly see the damage that has been done we can just imagine what kind of fear what kind of anxiety the people of tonga would be living in at this moment of time there are people uh, who are living outside tonga they are in fear that they may not be able to see their loved and loved ones again because of this eruption at the same time they must be worried because the connectivity is not there the people are not able to connect what is the situation there and how can the un provide the aid to the uh, to the people there because the un with its the un's world food program with all its aid is ready to provide them with the aid the red cross society is also ready to provide them the aid but right now the entire uh, entire island is covered with dust and um, uh, dust and uh, smoke therefore they cannot go into the island and they the situation is also not clear 
now the other questions that can be framed out of this news uh, is regarding the capital and the currency of tonga that you can uh, memorize on your own okay also need to remember that india has also announced the aid for tonga which is us dollar to 100000 okay moving ahead who has won the genesis prize 2022 so it is albert bola uh, who who has won this genesis prize which is also known as the nobel prize of the jews okay jewish nobel prize so clearly which country would give this prize it is israel so he has won this prize for his efforts in development of covid-19 vaccine so who is this to get the award for developing covid-19 vaccine he is presently the ceo of pfizer inc which is a global uh, pharmaceutical company okay now this prize is given by the genesis prize foundation at a ceremony in jerusalem and the prize money is us dollar 1 million which you need not to memorize particularly it's just for your information purpose now what are the reasons for which a person gets the award so they are, they get this award particularly for making uh, contributions to humanity and commitment to jewish values so this is also known as the jewish nobel prize next question is who has been appointed as a 17th chairman of indian farmers fertilizer cooperative so it, the right answer is dilip sanghani <coughs> who has been appointed as a president of european parliament roberta metsola is the right answer so guys european union has 15 bodies under it now the uh, organs that work as a brain of the european union or the legislative bodies of the european union per se are three just okay and these three are european parliament european council and european commission so for the parliament the president is this roberta metsola and she is the third woman to head the european parliament she belongs to malta do remember this point okay now european council is headed by charles michael from belgium and european commission is uh, chaired by ursula von der leyen from uh, germany and she is going to retain this position till 2024 So guys that was all for today I hope that you must have learned something new in the video and if you have then do not forget to subscribe the channel hit the bell notification thank you so much guys for watching this video